Hi, welcome back. This is the second video in the Strategic Marketing Management series for the Mancosa GSB MBA. I'm Jennifer Smith and I'm going to be talking to you about marketing or well, strategic marketing management in the context of the corporate strategic environment and then we're going to also look at the marketing mix and the role that it plays in, in the whole process. And I just want to say here that when we look at the 4P structure, I think you're going to agree with me, well I hope you will, that marketing is business and business is marketing. Okay, so let's look at the stages in formulating a strategy for the company as a whole. Because when you're looking at your marketing strategy, or before you can even start to look at your marketing strategy, you have to understand its role within the context of the corporate of the main business. So in terms of formulating a strategy for a company, you're going to analyze your market, environmental opportunities and threats. Then you're going to analyze your business strengths and weaknesses. Now I want to emphasize quickly that the opportunities and threats are external and the strengths and weaknesses are internal. Then based on all that information, you put together a SWOT, etc. And then you generate your objectives and your strategy. Then you have to evaluate those and that needs to be a very objective process. And then you create the plan with which you're now going to implement those um, strategies and then you create the control programs with which you measure. Once you've done that, you then develop the marketing strategy and the strategies for the other functions in the business. And my next video is going to be about how all this needs to be integrated in order to be effective. Okay, so let's look in detail at the, mar the strategic marketing planning process. So firstly, you've got your input from your corporate strategies and we've got mission, we've got the corporate objectives, we've got your strategic business unit objectives, etc. Um, and now you're going to work on your situation analysis. Firstly, you have to do an internal evaluation of your business's resources, your past performance, your reputation, your brand, what products you have, etc. Then you look at the environmental issues and that's your PESL. Um, acronym and we've got political issues, we've got economic issues, social, cultural, technology and environment. Importantly, you also have to look at your customer, obviously, all right, this is your target market. And in business to business, we tend to talk about a customer. In consumer, business to consumer, you're going to be talking literally about the consumer. But even in that in the consumer uh, market, you're also going to have a customer because often we are selling our product through a retailer and that retailer becomes your customer. I know it's all confusing, but the point is you have a product, you want to sell it to somebody and you need to find the channel through which you're going to sell it. Now, understanding your customer is incredibly important and it's an area that, consume, uh, that uh, business doesn't pay enough attention to. And often there is a sample of one and an assumption that I'm the customer, I'm the consumer, I understand, um, I, th I know what everybody else is going to want. Please don't make that mistake. Make sure that you back this up with research. Um, go and walk around the shops, go and talk to your customers, hire a professional firm, do formal research, do you know secondary research, understand the trends, who buys your product. That's internal research um, and you should already have a lot of data on it. But analyze it um, in, a, in a constructive, in a um, positive manner. So who buys, who doesn't, why do they buy? That's really difficult to understand, but it is possible with good research. Where, when, and how do they buy? You might be missing out opportunities, and you might be able to, um, or you might just not be exploiting um, certain opportunities properly. What do they do with the product? What does your consumer do with it now? And what are possible opportunities that you have for new ways in which they can use your product? And also, obviously, what new products might they need? And an important question to ask is, what problems do we solve for our customers? What is the pain that we can help relieve? And then we need to look at our competitor. Now, one of the things that I think is really important is that you don't get totally lost in your competitor. Because we don't want to be the same as. Um, we want to be different to our competitor. We un want to understand what their strengths, weaknesses and strategies are. But let's not get lost in benchmarking them. 
and in you know trying to be the same as me too do not make profits me too's are not brand builders you will not build brand equity you'll just become the same as everybody else uh, when we did a study in the fruit and vegetable canners market, we discovered that it was completely undifferentiated in terms of branding. And what, why that had happened was because Koo was such a big brand that it dominated the market completely and the smaller brands decided to copy. So Rhodes looks exactly the same as Koo. So when a consumer walks into that shop, all they're going to see is canned fruit. They're going to decide I want peaches or I want apricots, whatever, and they don't decide based on the brand. So what does that mean? That means that neither Koo nor Rhodes are able to ask a premium because the consumer is not actually going to pay that premium. The consumer is going to say, I want those peaches or those pears and which one is the least expensive. So you're leaving money on the table. Bad idea. Okay, so don't get hung up on the competition. And effectively from all that information, that whole situation analysis, you will come up with your SWOT, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats and you then decide which re resources you're actually going to apply to take advantage of the opportunities to mitigate the, th the threats and to create a sustainable business. From that SWOT, you'll develop your marketing objectives and your strategies. So in terms of objectives, you're looking at profitability, market share, volume, um, uh, which products you want to have sell more of, etc., etc. You'll also look at your strategies. Are you going to maintain the status quo? Are you going to change the industry that you're in? Are you going to move, for instance, Nokia moved from being, <laughs> they were in the forestry industry, then they discovered, okay, they were really good at making um, handsets for communication between the various foresters and so on. And from that, they realized, oh, wow, we're actually great with this, all this technology. Let's develop cell phones. And the last time I looked, they'd moved on yet again. Okay, so you don't always have to stay in the same industry. If you're looking at a growth strategy, then you've got to say, how are we going to do that? And there are a number of different strategies, market penetration, market development, product development, diversification, so many different ways of building and growing your market. So in terms of your marketing plan, which now start, we start to look at the marketing mix and we'll go into that in more detail soon. You have to say, what is my product or service? Okay, so we, we in the marketing mix, if you... Uh, remember is your four P's or your seven P's. I won't look at them all right now. We'll do that a little bit later. You look at your branding of your product and your service, how you position against your competitors, physical design, etc. There's a number of different um, aspects that you look at. Pricing, are you going to go cost basis, cost plus 10? Are you going to, what is the value trade-offs that your, cu your customer is prepared to make, that you're prepared to make? What's the el elasticity of pricing and the elasticity of demand? And I know that's economics, but hey, guess what? Economics just describes marketing in a more structured manner. So, and how competitive are you going to be? Are you going to, are you going to be priced at a premium, at a discount? Are you value add, etc.? Okay, distribution, that's place. Where are you going to sell? How are you going to sell? Um, you know, do you want to control your whole channel, but that's going to cost you a lot more money than if you're going through uh, general retailers, etc. Are you going to go to consumer retailers or wholesalers? Um, and that's a whole subject on its own. And then finally, communication. Now, what's really important in your marketing mix, and we'll talk about it again later, promotion can only come at the end. Communication can only come after you've decided all these other strategic things. You have to look at budgeting. How much of your budget are you going? How much budget are you going to have to create a marketing communication um, strategy? And different people have different ways of doing this. Some of the big corporates sort of take five percent of turnover and they apply that to the marketing communication budget. My preferred method is to say bottom up. I want to know who do I have to speak to. What are my consumers actually, um, where are they participating in terms of the media? What's the preferred method in which that they like to be t spoken to? And that's how you develop your budget. Then you say, what method are we going to use? Sales, advertising, PR, etc. What media within those methods? So within um, sales, could be personal sales, uh, it could be uh, telesales, etc. Or are you going to use digital so in terms of advertising, digital, print, TV, there's so many different media you can use. And then the message, what do we want to communicate with our various st stakeholder groups? And it, is, it can be quite different depending on who you're speaking to. And then implementation and control, you want to look at the measurable goals. So what that's based on your objectives, 
uh, what goals do you want to achieve? You're going to have to set those goals so that you can measure against them later. What are the benchmarks you're trying to um, achieve, match to? Then you have to give feedback to your board, to yourself and everyone. And then something that's really important is remediation. So if you've put a plan in place and you wanted to get 20% market share in a certain market with a certain target market, and when you do your evaluation, you discover that you actually haven't achieved those goals, you need to say, why not? What did we not do right? What can we do better? Has the market moved? Have the trends changed, etc.? That's critical for ongoing sustainable success. So let's look at the marketing mix. Um, in terms of the marketing mix, obviously there was the, the initial four P's, and that was start, that was uh, created by McCarthy in 1960. And he created a model that is actually really robust and has stayed with us for all this time. And as a marketer, it's something that I like to use uh, both to explain what marketing is and as a lecturer, obviously, um, I that's where I explain what it is. And as a marketer and a marketing strategist, I use that to actually try and work out what my client's marketing mix is going to look like. So we start with product and product is all about the um, you know what is the physical product is it a service how much service what is it actually going to look like um, and that's often developed by an entrepreneur or just you know by in a company by the people with with ideas based on r d based on what consumers want um, looking at gaps in the market to see what things do people still need um, okay then we look at price uh, I like, I would prefer to have had price in product, but anyway, price is really important because it helps, number one, it refers to the, the value that you are setting on your product. It positions your product and your brand against your competition. And price also is where you're going to make your money. All right, as long as the consumer agrees with the value that you're offering for that price and how much it's going to cost them to acquire that product. Then place is your channel members, your channel motivation, market coverage. It's so which retailers are you going to go through? Are you going to have your own stores like Levi has a number of their own stores, etc. Or are you going to sell through Edgar's um, and be just one brand amongst many others? Place um, is really important because it's also a positioning thing and it gets your product to your, uh, to your target market. And then in the 4P model, they skip straight, they go to promotion, and that's your, as we've discussed previously, advertising, personal selling, etc. So if we look at the 5P model, then what got added in here was people, and this was done by Judd in 1987. And people is obviously really important, uh, even if it's just a purely a product driven, uh, physical product driven um, market and company. People have to make the product, um, people, and you're selling to people. So part of what you look at there is saying, okay, so I look at my staff, I look at my consumer or my customer. In terms of my staff, are they the right people to serve those consumers and those customers? Do I have the right people that are going to be able to build my company properly? And that's why it's really crucial to integrate throughout your entire company that various functions because if HR doesn't understand the vision of your brand if they don't understand what is important to your customers and your consumers they're not going to be hiring the correct people and you won't be able to grow your business okay the next model 6p model 1984 and he included funny enough Kotler didn't actually include people here he went for public opinion formation so here we're talking about the whole PR thing and reputation we'll talk about that in another video and political power and that political power is really important for many many companies and we won't go into that right now however that's not a model that has actually uh, been used very very much in modern marketing management what has become particularly important I think in um, modern marketing management is the seven P's of the marketing mix. And here we have your normal four P's of product, price, place, and promotion. The fifth P, people, has been brought in as well. And they talk here in terms of customer contact, employees, customers, personnel, and management, okay? And this was developed by Booms and Bittner in 1981. 
So the sixth P in this model is process. And why it's often related to services is because processes, our services are nebulous. They are intangible and they are often offered by people and people are different and how we talk to people and how we do things is very different. So what becomes very important in the service industry is that standardized processes are developed so that when the product, the service product is delivered to the customer and the consumer, they get the same thing every single time, regardless of who the person is that's serving them. Um, and procedures and protocols are also very important so that we maintain our quality standards. So this process is all about maintaining quality and delivering the same quality to our, um, to our consumers and our customers. And then physical evidence. Now physical evidence is quite an interesting one. It relates back to promotion in that it's part of the brand image and the brand uh, representation. But now, if and it, and it relates particularly to services because services being intangible, you want to provide your customer and your consumer with a physical evidence that they've actually consumed your service. So we're talking about brochures, we're talking about the name badges on the service people on the shop floor, we're talking about the signage outside the building, what the foyer looks like, um, how smart is the receptionist at the front desk, how well does he or she present themselves. Um, so it's every contact point that your customer or your consumer has with your service business and with your service brand has to be a, a really powerful representation of what your brand is all about. Otherwise you start to damage that reputation and you start to damage that brand that you've built up. Okay, and that is a little bit, tiny little bit about marketing strategy and the role that it plays within the, the greater corporate strategy. So that concludes our discussion about marketing strategy and the role that it plays in corporate strategy and also the functionality of the marketing mix in creating your marketing strategy. And I hope that you agree with me that marketing is business and business is marketing. And I look forward to seeing the results of your studies in the success of your businesses. I'll see you in the next video.